sort of sky flashed and then they started saying something strange that the radiation cleanup had begun. And I talked about that in the video earlier where Japan had a flash in the sky, but that wasn't the only thing that happened. Apparently, a green flash at sunset on December 8th, 2025 happened. And they say this is a rare phenomenon called the green rim, and it actually happens every sunset, which doesn't make sense. How is it a rare phenomenon, but it happens every sunset? That doesn't make sense, does it? So then I read a little bit further. Despite the dramatic name, a green flash isn't an explosion or a burst of energy. It's simply sunlight being bent and split by the Earth's atmosphere. So then why did you tell us that it was a rare phenomenon? And remember, we just had the radiation, solar radiation situation cause the planes to be grounded. And we had the rare solar flare cause radiation in the atmosphere to spike. Just as we're getting these images in of the atmosphere today. Other than that, I got a little bit deeper here because I seen that Mr. MB333 was showing these strange rings in the sky too as well. And they're showing up on radar. So what I did is I noticed that the U University of Alaska Fairbanks that works alongside of HARP, I had to look into that and I found some stuff here because there's a PhD student that works there. And he said that the sky at Alaska Fairbanks tonight has started a red glow. And you can see right here on the sky cam where the glow is starting up. The red is not that bright yet. But like I said, he works at this facility. What am I getting to here? Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm getting to because they announced something one day after this December 8th, 2025 flash photo that happened in the atmosphere, along with flashes in Japan that happened on the 9th as well. So let's check out what happened December 9th, 2025. Geophysical Institute of University of Alaska Fairbanks. Stay with me here because you're about to learn something that nobody else is telling you. What does it say? One day after December 9th, 2025, research offers defense against energized space electrons. Researchers at University of Alaska Fairbanks Geophysical Institute is advancing the ability to quickly clean up Earth's radiation belts from a flood of energetic electrons created by extraordinary solar blast or a nuclear explosion in space. Hmm. Why are we adding nuclear explosion? And when I read a little bit deeper here, they started talking about what was going to happen, but what already previously happened that really adds in big details to the picture. Now, listen to this. They say on July 1962, a test by a nuclear test by the United States about 250 miles above Pacific Ocean intensified Earth's radiation belts, created a vivid aurora, knocked out several satellites, and generated an electromagnetic pulse that disrupted power and communications as far as Hawaii. Several explosions. High altitude uh, nuclear blasts by U.S. and the Soviet Union from 1958 to 1962. Those detonations spawned research into cleaning up the aftermath. So, specifically, what they're talking about is, if you don't know, is Operation Fishbowl, and the other name for it is Starfish Prime. And in these experiments, what happened is. The upper atmosphere, some people allege that they were trying to break through the firmament. That's what people allege, but they claim they were doing projects in the atmosphere to further some experiment with these nuclear blasts to understand more about the atmosphere, which in terms, honestly, is pretty weird. But that brings us to now today. What are they doing today and why do they need to go up and try to clean out, they say, these energized electrons from radiation. And the question is, do you trust that in the chat? That's why I want to see. How do you feel about that? Just say, hey, I trust and say, I don't if you don't. Now, let's go into deeper here of uh, the story, because now we go deeper into the research and the analysis and what are they actually going to be doing over these next couple of days, weeks and months? So I'll read here for you. It says sometimes can take several weeks or months. Geophysical Institute Professor Paul has devised a tested method that could lead a way to clean up radiation belt in just a few minutes, depending on the electron's energy level. 
Now, how is he going to do this? Obviously, it involves some type of electromagnetic waves into the atmosphere, right? Or maybe is it maybe it doesn't concern it, does it? Well, let's find out right now. I'm going to go into it. Here's what he said. The science. Bernhardt's continue to work is so-called rocket exhaust driven amplification. The process starts with the ground transmission of very low frequency waves into the ionosphere. The ionosphere, which begins at about 30 miles altitude, is a plasma shell where solar radiation strips electrons from the atoms and fills the upper atmosphere with charged particles. The waves stretch and change shape. When they reach the ionosphere, the result is a wave called the Whistler wave. That wave isn't strong enough at point to knock out energized electrons. So Burhardt's method gives it a boost with the help of a rocket exhaust from passing satellite or other spacecraft. Interaction of rocket exhaust molecules, ionosphere oxygen ions create localized corridor through Earth's magnetic field. The corridor composed of enhanced plasma guides the whistlers in and out of the radiation belt. So they're going to enhance the situation here. They're going to enhance it. And so what are we talking about here? What could you hear? What could you see over the next course of days and weeks? Just as we're seeing this photo of this flash in the atmosphere. And again, the flashes is a part of this. The Whistler wave cannot be heard by the human ear. So this is what the Whistler wave sounds like. It sounds like some type of space invader sound. All right, so I'm going to give you what to look for, what could be potentially happening since we are having these events. What could be seen in the sky? So ionosphere glows. You can start to see certain radio wave experiments happen caused by localized patches of glowing plasma in the ionosphere. This can be happening over the next course of days since they're doing this. Faint shifting colors, similar to very weak auroras, green and purple. This was announced just today, and you can see on live camera that that was happening. Yeah, we got a little solar stuff coming in, but this is something else as well. Rapid cloud-like distortions at high altitude as waves reshape the ionosphere plasma. Observers might notice ripples or wave-like distortions, very faint pulse patterns, wispy streaks. You can describe this as like the sky behaving strangely, almost like an aurora, but more structured. You know how we, in the last video, I showed you the blue lights in the sky, and if you didn't see that, you got to go see that after this. We saw a strange structure inside of the light, which it was these like little thin layers. So that's what I'm talking about when I speak on this specifically. While I'm talking, I'll just play Operation Fishball Prime. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah, I'm back now. My voice kind of went out for a second. What else would you notice? Okay, because of Burhardt's work involves rockets, a bright exhaust plume expanding in a circular halo. You might see that. A lot of people say, oh my God, what is that in the sky? That SpaceX type thing. You could see a spiral expanding, a cloud at high altitude. These are common though during upper stage releases. Now, what could be heard? Whistler waves, you can't hear that. We just told you about that. Um, so sudden bursts of static, though, radio interference, static bursts, temporary dropouts, distorted communication bands. So, I mean, if you've been hearing it already, let me know in the chat section if that's something that you've been hearing currently. As we're speaking about the actual ex uh, situation that's going on right here, which they say research offers defense against energized space electrons. This is letting us know that. Yes, they've been doing this, but now they say they have a new method just announcing this December 9th, 2025. And it's been multiple videos. I'm not going to go to them, but across social media, I was putting videos out of people seeing sky flashes and they didn't know what was going on. Well, this gives us a little bit more insight to what could it be. Uh, another person says we won't see nothing here in foggy California. That's a good question, because some people were saying that maybe in California they didn't want you to see something. They were claiming this, that maybe something was happening in the sky that they needed to have so much fog over. All of these areas was what people were saying. Do y'all think that's accurate? Do you think something else may be happening in the atmospheres? Um, so 
Other than that, though, I wanted to bring up uh, a little bit more pieces of information here. So temporary changes in radiation belts. Researchers want a way to drain excess electrons after a solar storm is what they're saying. And basically, if high energy electrons move or precipitate, you get brighter auroras, aurora seen at unusual latitudes, vibrant color shifts. And basically, you get a lot of magnometer spiking. And we did see that, too, over the yes, just yesterday. I was showing how the magnometers were spiking. And then we seen certain locations where potential earthquakes could strike. So all of this is on the table for the uh, next coming days as well. And this is all due to the situation at the UAF uh, with them potentially so-called cleaning up the radiation belt so you, you also might have hf radio changes you might have these significant strange little interferences happening there uh, are y'all having any interferences happening with your equipment because i know you would say well that's probably just solar radiation well not when you have ionospheric conditions uh in this experiment going to be like let's let's read a little bit of this so Bernhardt, a UAF graduate student researcher, Sam McKay, have been presenting the method of science conferences. Bernhardt will present again at the American Geophysical Union annual meeting later this month. So they're going to be presenting this publicly. Uh, I think they want to adopt this more widely as we go. So if you want to stay tuned, you want to stay updated, you need to click that like. A lot of people believe that a lot more is going on than we know here. But what I'm going to do is you're going to look right over there. And strange quake lights. Japan's blue sky flashes. Then the quake hit and West Coast is on alert. We put that out just a few ago. You may have not gotten the notification. So what I'll do for you, you have it right there. You have to click that video. And then also you'll look in the live section right now. If you're newly tuning in here and you don't see it, that link is right in the live chat. You need to see that. We'll have more coming. We're going to be following these updates. What are you seeing right now in your state? Any flashes? Any of that happening? Let us know. We're going to be analyzing all the information and giving you more to be prepared.